guys, how's it going? My name is Daryl. Welcome back to this Python for Finance series. In the previous lessons, we just learned how to create the figures and also the apses, and also we put some design on that. And we also created the main skeletons that is our animate functions, which will help us to continue to capture the data at the backend. And also for this one, we uh, created four subplot that includes the main plot um, that has the candlestick charts have, that contains the strategies and so and so. And then we have the volume charts, the MACD charts, and also RSI charts. And again, we use um, the grid spat to help us to create these subplots. And finally, of course, just like what I mentioned, we're going to continue to use the animate functions to help us to continue to continue to update the data. So what we are going to do in these lessons is to resample the data. For around every one or two seconds, we can capture the data from uh, Yahoo Finance. But uh, what we wanted to do is to have a candlestick plot. So in that case, we need to define the time intervals to plot out that candlestick. Say, for example, if we would like to capture a candlestick for every minute, then we need to resample the data for each of the minutes and then create an open, high, low, close. And then say, for example, for this one, the open price is this one, is this, and then go look the close price is this. And then, of course, we want to find out the maximum within this minute. And then we want to find out the minimum for this minute. And this is the say 10.04 and then we want to have 10.05 and so and so and so that is what we're going to do with the use of Python. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing first, we need to read the data. I will continue to use the file format names that I used it to capture the data. So what I need to do is to just copy and paste that timestamp. And then, so of course, I want to create a file name for it because I use that file names to save the data. So I just continues to use the same file name to read the data and so at the back end we continues to update the data um, with the selenium or with the beautiful shoe and of course just like what i mentioned i recommend to use selenium and then at front end we continues to read the data with these animate functions and here of course the file name just contains the year month and date in that case uh, you can actually simplify the code over here the reason why i use the full format over here is because i want to make sure that we know at what times um, the stock is being captured but for this one because we just would like to read the excel so we can simplify the format uh, for the file name so now I want to process the data and what I would like to pass into these process functions that includes the file names and I also want to provide a stock link into this. This will just allow me to have some flexibility just in case if I would like to pot out uh, multiple stock but uh, for these times i will just focus on a single stock and then that should be apple in my case here we just capture the information from apple so 
at the back end. So in the front end, we just capture the data into the uh, into the stock of a. Um, I mean, uh, we just would like to capture the 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 stock apple over here. So I just um this is the, uh, I just create a stock uh, in the list and then just capture the first element. There are a few things that I would like to get get back from this process data function. The first thing is the data. Of course, this data frame data is in a data frame that contains the open, high, low, close uh, in a, a particular time interval. And then I would like to get the latest price, latest change, target, and also volume. So that is what I want to get from this process data function. So here for this stock data, we need to add a space over here because you can see the file names that contains um, the year, month, and date with a space and then stock data. So I just make sure everything is correct. Cool. Now we can create the functions that is the process data. Let's create the process data functions and it will just pass a stock code or stock names inside these functions. And just like what I mentioned, of course, I would like to return this thing. The first things that we need to do is to with the CSV file and then pass it on to into a into a data frame. But remember for this data frame, uh, this is not um, in a, in the formats that we would like to have. What we would like to have is these formats, but when we're with the data frame, it will just provide me these formats. So the first things that I would like to do is to read the file name. We do not have the header. Um, in here, I want to rename the column. So we have the columns that contains the time, time, stock code, price changes, volumes, and also the target. So what I wanted to do is to rename them accordingly. So the first one is the time, and the second one is the stock code, and then that is the price changes, and then that is the volume. Remember that is an accumulated volume, so we need to do something later on. Um, to, to make sure that we get the transactions volumes um, during that particular time interval that you define. And now we have the name for each of the columns. I wanted to define the index columns with the use of the times. So I want to pass a date over here into these columns. This will help me to create a daytime object um, for these time columns. And these time columns will be the index column. And we wait the data in a CSV file. Everything will become a string. So in that case, I will need to change them uh, to the to the types that I want. But um, for the uh, for the time column, it has been already changed to a daytime object called type. So I do not need to do anything. And then for the rest, I need to change them accordingly. Um, but for these price changes, I will just keep them as strange. 
I do not need to do anything because I just want to show show it uh, into the in the in the platforms directly. So I do not need to change anything. But for these three columns, I need to change their type into a floating type so that I can do some calculations uh, later on. So I will create a function that will help me to check and also to convert the strings into the float uh, with the uh, with these ds functions in provided into as the first arguments and the second arguments of course is that I need to define the column so say for example the for columns that I would like it to check and convert from a string to float is the stock code columns that is the that contains the stock price and similarly just like what I mentioned I also wanted to do the check convert uh, string from a string convert the data from string to a float type so I wanted to do that for volumes and also for the target now we can define these check convert string load functions and this is the data frame that we would like to put into and then we would like to provide the appropriate column name into it. So the first thing that we need to check is, is of course, um, whether or not this column is really, is really a, is really containing a string. So in that case, we would like to check whether or not the, for the first elements or the first cells that is a string that means we would like to check say for example for this one we would like to check these columns that is the stock price columns and then the first elements whether or not this number is a string uh, if that is a string uh, we will then just um, continues to do something and then the first things that we would like to do is to we place the comma with nothing the reason is because sometime let me show you sometime some of the data especially for the transactions that will contains a commerce so when we capture the csv file because this is a this is a string rather than a number so in that case that will contains the numbers so we are going to remove this comma and then the second things that i wanted to do is to we place the empty leads with nothing. Remember when we capture the data, we use these empty list. And of course you can just change this to a numpy uh, NANs or you can just continue to use this empty empty list and but uh, in my case I just use the empty list so in that case I need to cater for this this empty list when we capture nothing when there's some error so in that case the first is to just remove this uh, open bracket and then for the close bracket, we will just replace it with an NAN. So now we can then convert them into a full type. So I'm going to assign a type 
that is a bolt pipe to it. And then finally, of course, just return me this uh, data frame. The reasons why I create these functions um, is mainly because sometimes you might capture some funny, um, funny characters. So in that case, you might not be able to figure out what happens or or that will make create some error. So say for example, you can see we might sometimes have some funny characters, but of course this is the, for the price change. It doesn't matter. And then for for example, for sometimes we might also capture nothing or capture a and and some funny characters. So in that case, whenever you come across that, you can just change these functions to help you to convert those things into a NumPy NANs and, and then that will allow you to assign a folding type into that uh, particular column. And then for the NAN, I will just fill NA with the method um, fill forward and in place equals to two. What does that mean is that whenever, say for example, for this one, we have an NP dot NAN or just an NAN or just an NAN. So what we're going to do is to fill this cell one one seven one dot is to fill this number into it. So you will then find something like this. This is the um, forward fill. There are some informations that we can capture directly without converting them into the time interval, into the open hydro codes or into the time intervals that we would like to have. Say for example, for the latest price informations, uh, let's say this is the last price and if you can consider there's nothing done there. So then we can capture these as the latest price and the latest change and also the volume. So in that case, we can display them accordingly. Say, for example, we have the latest price, we have the latest change, and also for the target price, the, um, it's not going to change. So these are all, all the informations that we can take it directly from the Excel file and also this volume. We're not going to do anything. So I just want to show the latest information. So in that case, I can directly capture the information over here. So we will just get the latest information from the last row. I capture everything from the last row as the latest information and then and then we can put them back into the latest price latest change and because i just want to display them so i'm going to you convert them into a string again to make sure that they can be displayed. So what I'm going to do is to go to the last row and then get the latest price and also the latest change. And then for the target, similarly, we can just go to the target columns and get the latest value and for the the last value the latest value and then for the volume similarly we can get the 
lazy value. Now we can do the resampling. So there are two things. Uh, there are two things that I need to do the resampling. That includes the volume, the volumes, and also for the price that I need to do the resampling. Because when we group this price all together, we also need to consider how we need to deal with the volume. So there are two things that we need to do. The resampling. One is the volume, and then the other is the stock price. So we sample and also we sample. And now the first things that we need to consider is the time interval. The time interval. Later on, actually, you can put that put these things into a into a functions, or and and then you can just change the arguments directly to just change the resampling frequency. But at this point, I just put it as a default as a one minute time interval. So for the volumes. What I'm going to do is to take the mean. So this is the volume. I take the mean when we do the resampling for every minutes. So in that case, I just take the mean. Uh, F is over here. Uh, I just take the mean for this one, and then for the Price, I'm going to resample them into a open, high, low, close format, just like what I show over here. After we resample the data, I also want to put the index. Uh, with the use of the times column. So say, for example, we still have the times columns over here, and then I just want to put that into our index. And of course, I also wanted to make sure that uh, it's, a, it's a daytime object. So I do this again to daytime objects. And then this is the time and the format that we are going to use is to use the year, month, day, hour, minutes, seconds. So that is exactly the same to what we to what we did, to what we do when we capture the data. So the formats are exactly the same. And then I also want to create a RSI columns so that later on I can plot the data. Uh, and I also wanted to calculate the volumes difference to create that bar chart. So for the RSI, this is the RSI informations, and I just directly calculate um, the details over here. And then for the and then for the volume difference, because right now everything is accumulated in terms of the vol volume, so I need to calculate the difference in order for me to create this bar chart. So. What I need to do is to capture, say, capture the volume from the uh, from the five minutes and capture the mean. Say, for example, that is the mean. That is the average over here. Uh, that is the average. Say, uh, from here to here, 
and then that is the average and then i want to calculate the difference so that i know how much how how much transactions that we've done at this open high low close price so that is the whole point so instead of using the accumulated uh, transactions i just um calculate the difference so for the our side i am going to use the technical analysis functions from the of the panders um, technical analysis and for this one no i would like to use the closing price to calculate the rsi and then for the time period i use uh, 14 and then please feel free to change that and then for the rsi i just wanted to make sure because at the very beginning because right now we are using 14 so before 14 uh, time periods or the time windows there's no data so in that case i just would like to fill the data with zero that will make sure that the y axis and x sorry that would make sure that the x axis will be shifted uh, 13 points before the port Otherwise, it will just um, shift the, the entire RSI into the left-hand side. So I do not want to do that. So here, I just, let me change the color. So here, I just assign zero to the first 13 points. And then for the volume, remember, we just capture the mean so i'm going to use this to calculate the difference and fill the nen fill it with any we we'll fill it with a zero if there's an nen value on the other hand sometimes we might have some error that we cannot that we calculate the volume difference that is less than zero. That means there's a negative transactions in terms of the volume. So that that would not happen in reality, right? So in that case, I am going to, if that is the case, so this is the conditions. If that is the conditions, please help me to change the values to zero. And finally, just uh, we set the index, uh, make sure things are correct. And in place equals to true. And finally, let's see if we get all these informations correct. And just make a typo over here and run the program. Excellent. Now you can see we just extract all these informations from uh, from the live data or from the CSV file, and then we we calculate, we sample them into an open, high, low, close. And we also calculate the RSI and also the volume difference uh, for the for the RSI chart and also the volume chart. And then at the same time, we just capture the latest price, latest price changes the target price, and also the latest volume. Excellent. Now we have them have the data in the correct format.
In the next lessons, we will work on the plot. So see you in the next video. Bye bye.